It's Addicton News time again. Last week we had off, Darren, but I tell you, we've got a cracking race meeting this week and uh, looking forward to the return of you know, horses like Muscle Mountain, but Mystic Max is there, the Derby winner Nazareth is uh, having his first run back too. So there's plenty of interest this week. Yeah, look, it just starts to build as we wind into what are our feature meetings, particularly the 31st of March, which is a premier meeting, and then Easter Saturday a week later with the uh, country championship final. Uh, 100k there, plus all the uh, racing rewards races, there's five of them at 27,000, so the form from these ones is going to be really good, but yeah, it's a tricky it's a tricky card, and you'll see when we do the preview that some of them are pretty awkward to pick. Really. Yeah, they absolutely they are, so we're back here Friday night. Just before we get into some other things relating to Addington, uh, someone who's been a big part of this place uh, since the Greyhounds come here, and I think it was about 97, somewhere around there, uh, and, and indeed in, in harness across the board because he called all of the trials for such a long period of time, uh, the passing of Trevor Wilkes last Thursday. Yeah, look, a, a sad thing that's happened uh, right on his retirement. Such a, a loyal servant to the entire racing industry, all three codes, Greyhounds in particular, but all three codes. And you think back to things like uh, trials videos that Trev and... and um, Ian the, Muir was the other guy who put it together with him, wasn't Neville, it? Neville, yeah. Neville, Neville, um, was Neville Muir from Neville Mirage Muir, Recordings. Yep. But, you know, in those days, um, going to the the hotel and, and rang you to watch the trials was the only way you could see them. Yep. So, you know, a, a really big job that he did for the industry and uh, he will be missed. He, you know, he was, uh, oh, he's a character. pleasant with everyone yeah. and uh, one of the things that I remember is just that voice. A wee bit like Rion, he had a distinctive voice, real commentator's voice, real command and uh, he quite liked the to laugh too, Greg. He did. He did, yep. a, did a mind a bit, and uh, yeah, he will be missed and sadly, sadly passed away last week. Yeah. All right. Uh, you definitely deserve to rest in peace, Trev. Don't worry about that. Um, the next month, we've talked about some of the big things that are, are coming up, and you're going to have some music on course as well. Yeah, 31st, that premier meeting will have Anton on course, and he's been booked for a series of meetings either out here, which we did outside a couple of. Uh, just the start of the uh, start of the year, I should say, and that worked quite well. As long as weather's permitting, we'll do that. Creates a good atmosphere. Alternatively, it'll just be in spectators towards the back end of the program. Um, I think this week's big. Next week's massive. Yep. Uh, we've got the Invade student group on the roof here. It's completely sold out already. Fourteen hundred of them. Right. Uh, we've got some beads upstairs with a fundraiser. That's always great fun. That sells out and is sold out. Uh, we've got rugby next door. The same night, we've got the uh, home show across the road. <laughs> There's a bit going on here. If you're yeah. wanting a park, you might need to bring Car Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and of course, we race also next Wednesday as well, so two race meetings next week. But there's a bit coming up. Coming up. Mother's Day, is that not far away either? Yeah, Mother's Day we're working on, and there'll be more information. You can note that down that their spectators will be open yep. on Mother's Day, and there'll be a special price coming out. I think it'll be about 30 bucks, right? including a number of things and prize draws and a wee uh, present for every mum that's attending. Cool. So there'll be more information about that, but if you're looking to get the family together, start thinking about Mother's Day, there will be an option here at Spectators. All right, we've got a full meeting preview coming up for you. Obviously, Muscle Mountain looks uh, one of the best of the night. Also, like Lumen Shaley, I thought uh, very unlucky here last week. If you want to watch the full meeting preview, you can do so, and then we'll have a look back at one of the historic Lamb and Haywood classics, won by the mighty Mombay. All right, full meeting preview for Friday night. It's going to be an exciting night. Greg Race 1 gets underway, 5.09. IRT, your horse, our passion, handicap trot, 2,600 metres. Uh, Darren will do our best to help the punters out. I've always had a bit of a rap on Cormor and Strike for uh, Costa Hare. Robbie Close doing the steering. Yes, it got it wrong last time. Prepared to forgive uh, him of that, and he's certainly capable of winning a race like this. So I'll go for him on top of Tedesco, who continues to race very well. Greg and Nina Hope, Ben Hope. Last start performance in behind time up the hill, so it's a step back in grade uh, here, so it should be hard to beat. And over to the Moons, it's been uh, really racing well. That's uh, so one here at Addington in the past. Off the front, you know where you'll be. It'll be up in the firing line throughout. And Light of the Moon is much better than her form would indicate. The last start, fourth, uh, albeit a wee way behind Almighty Fear, I thought was an improvement, so wouldn't need to lift much off that. Nine, eight, one, and seven. 
a number of these horses, of course, Greg, will make the, their way to Easter Saturday for those racing rewards races. So the format of these going forward is going to be important. I think I looked, had a quick look. Vertigo, I think, is in front of the Trotters one. So good effort by Lawrence there. Yeah. yeah, good race at the end of that campaign, end of this campaign for it. Race number two, first leg of the early quaddy, the XEM Sport Mobile Pace 1980, and it gets underway 5.39. Yeah, I'm happy to have a decent each way bet on major talk here. Um, I reckon if he goes forward and gets the lead, and I think I said that about three starts back, and he ended up sitting in the 1-1 one, one, uh, and running second and, and was a pretty good second and behind South Seas Rock. Uh, I'd just like to see him in front where he's dominated at Addington in the past, and if he can get there, then I think he'll take all sorts of beatings. So I'll go for him ahead of Franco Cornell for the strong uh, Dunn team. Uh, um, four seconds in a row, probably do a win. Nice barrier draw. No reason to think it won't be in the finish here. Gave an each way chance to Mickey Bennett, mainly because if he drew the front row, he would probably win this race, but he's going to need some luck. Follows out Tower of Love, um, which will be a pretty good draw because it does have enough early speed to uh, to hold up. Whether, whether it stays there or not will be the, the big question mark. Obviously, if Mickey Bennett sits in the trail throughout, it becomes the horse to beat. So it's a great chance, and Classy Dancer has been racing well for a wee while, and uh, well, it's certainly on the improve in its last couple. So I'm expecting a big run from the Tony Barron trained runner. Five, two, ten, and eight. There's a, there's a few cases there that you could make for uh, other runners in what is a tricky first leg of the opening quaddy. Race number three is the Avon City Ford Mobile Pace 1980 606. Yeah, go for Lumen Shaley here. You only need to have a look at the last start. Just never got a crack at them. Look the winner and, and things just went pear-shaped from there. Uh, I, I reckon Blair will be pretty positive this week. And if he rolls somewhere near the lead, then he'll take some beating. So I'll go for the five ahead of Magic Four, who was the Harness Million winner as a two-year-old. Uh, look, he's a, he's a pretty smart horse, uh, Magic Four, and... Uh, wouldn't need to uh, to improve much off his three-year-old year into his four-year-old. He's had a couple of trials. Um, in fact, he must have been the three-year-old Harness Million winner. Whatever. He won a Harness Million, Darren. Um, just try to get your head around the change of birthday sometimes. It's a bit of a bit of a trap. Uh, but he's got a good draw and he's trialled well. So he'll improve, but he'll be in this, I'd say. See your art will be a chance. Nice effort first up. Uh, Stephen Amanda Tell for Hayden Cullen and Johnny Cox. And Bollinger from the inside draw, uh, I spoke to Blair about his trial and he said, look, he, I think he'll probably need a run. Sam Motley takes the reins this week um, and therefore I, I think whatever he does this week, he'll improve off. I've left out Happy Place, which is gutsy play, Darren, off the back of his last start winning performance where he beat Dancing Desire. He rated better than 55 and yeah, he, he was just great. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to have Lumen Shaley as uh, one of the better bets of the night. Race number four is the Matt Harrison Construction Pace, 2,000 metres, 6.35. New sponsors the last couple of years to Addington, Matt Harrison, and uh, they've got a couple of uh, big nights coming up in the next few weeks, Greg. Yeah, they have, and they've got the sign on the back fence too. They've got all their clients coming out in a couple of weeks' time, so looking forward to uh, hosting them. Uh, Mawanga has won two of his three starts. He got it wrong at Cromwell on the first day, but redemption on the second day for him. Beautifully bred, isn't he? Out of uh, the Group 1 winner, the Neville R winner in O oh Baby. She also won a harness jewel, so uh, there's plenty of uh, breeding about this horse and some big-name owners involved in it as well. Uh, so I'll go for him on top. He's not the full package yet, though, so the, the, there's no absolute just line-up and win job here. Come together's racing great. Blue Rock Dancer, the same can be said, and also uh, absolute dynamite. I thought it's a big step back uh, for it, having gone around behind She's Tough in those two post-races last weekend. The trap here, Darren, is the 2,000-metre stand. So finding a horse that's going to step quickly and, and grab the lead, the, the other ones to beat, but there's not really a classic standing start exponent here. Arizona Wildcat, I, I, I'm not so sure that it'll be first out, although it can step. And, yeah, it's just just a tricky, tricky race. But uh, I'll mark them five, eight, one, and three. Still can be quick, Greg, at times, but generally from a mobile, as you say, Correct. so the 2,000 yeah. metres can catch out. That's one that you could have a look at the ultimate race book and look at those horses that are quick the from a stand. Teams. Absolutely. Race number five is the last leg of that early quaddy continental event, higher mobile trot, 1980, and it gets underway at 7 o'clock. 
Yeah, we see the Derby want to re return here in Nazareth, and he's trialled, and he's trialled nicely. Um, look, the mobile should be of assist. If it was a stand, I'd be worried, because often the three-year-old's coming back having their first go, but it's a mobile, and um, he, his, his trial beating Artie by the hill was uh, was really good, and he won his previous trial too. So a few ticks there, mate. I, I, I'm loath to tip against him this week. He, he definitely will improve, but he's good enough to win it. Uh, Martha Stewart is a, a specialist at this distance on this track from a good draw. No reason to think that she won't be in front early and whether she stays there or takes a trail, she'll take some beating. Uh, Mystic Max, again, I spoke to Blair Orange about where he's at. He won his trial, but he said he'll definitely need one, and he's drawn in behind Benny and the Jets, so um, he might need some luck, but he'll definitely improve off it. And Two Tangata is the other one you've got to have in there. Uh, trained by Paul Nen, last start winning performance at MEF and was good. Uh, no reason to think that this horse won't just continue to improve. Good race, five, two, ten, six. One of those races, Greg, you look at it and you, you can make a case for every runner in the field, including a couple of them that are slightly out of form for their own own um, yeah. by their own standards at the moment. So very competitive. Race. race number six, the box seat on every Wednesday, mobile pace, 1980, 7.28, obviously, uh, you look after that with with Mick and a, a lot of information coming up in the next few weeks with things like the race by Grins and the feature racing in the North Island as well as our premieres coming up. So a variety of places to watch that, Greg, if you're not watching it live. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, w what we've done with this year's show is tried to make it as much about previewing rather than just having a whole lot of review stuff. Because so often, obviously, it's the Wednesday post a Friday night race meeting. All of that information's been out there. So this week's a good example of that. There's two or three races from Alexandra Park previewed. There's four from Addington, a couple down south as well. So uh, yeah, we're just doing our best to, uh, to cover as much as we possibly can. And this race here, the trial form would suggest that Four to five will win it. Bred by the Remwicks, uh, owned by Gene Feast. Really nice, uh, really nice filly and has trialled nicely. And I asked Blair about her most recent trial, what sort of feel um, he got from her. And uh, very, very nice. He said a really, really nice filly. So she'll be short and she'll probably win. Uh, to beat Almighty Clever, who you would think might just drop straight to the trail. That might be the most logical Cronella of the day. But Dina Magic was good first up for the Telfer Cullen Barn. Has a handy draw. They may go one, two, three, the fence, unless Medina Magic decides to roll out. And then Scarlet's Legacy from Gavin Smith's, uh, it's a Vincent, uh, well-bred filly, who has drawn the outside, but I like the way she trialled. So really interested to see what she can produce. One, two, three, and eight. An old Eastwood dream still going around in Maidens, which surprises me. It's had 16 goes now, Darren. There's definitely a win there. Maybe not this week, though. Race number seven is the Lamb and Hayward Trotters Classic Handicap Trot. It's a Group 3 race over 2,600, 7.53. Lamb and Hayward, of course, long-time sponsors with Addington Raceway. Greg, sponsors of this race, the Trotters Classic, and, of course, the Canterbury Classic, which leads into New Zealand Cup um, in November. So... Really, really pleased to have them on board. Muscle Mountain won for fun last time. Greg and Nina Hope with four horses in this race, and we appreciate the help that they've given us to get this race off the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, we, we know where he sits in the pecking order now. Sunday Sun's retired. Bolt for Brilliance is off uh, and, and won't be racing again in the immediate future. This horse is just the best of them. There's no question about that at all. And, and um, 30 metres might not be enough. Interesting. He's had three mobiles uh, on the bounce and he goes back to a stand and he's got it wrong the odd time, but he's back there on his own. So he can just wander up to the tape when he likes. I don't see it being a problem. And if he's anywhere near them with a lap to go, if he hasn't moved by then, then, then he should just win. He's just got panels on them. The stable mate, Midnight Dash, keeps trying to run him down, but... He can't quite do that. Time up the hill's the interesting runner off the front. She's in her best form and, and career best form. And she made it win number 10 last time. And if she's going to be able to beat Artie by the hill, Midnight Dash and Muscle Mountain, all of those off marks, then she's probably going to have to do it from the top end. And I don't know that that's her absolute modus either. Um, but I reckon she'll give you a sight. And Artie by the hill, who's uh, in a fresh condition, uh, having come back from uh, Alexandra Park campaign, has trialled and trialled OK and behind Nazareth. So, yeah, I'd imagine there's some improvement there, but probably wouldn't need to improve that much. Eight, seven, two and six. 
Greg and Nina Hope having a great time, and of course Dobby having a great time with Muscle Mountain. Absolutely. But no one, no one having a better time going out onto the track each time he drives, and then Ben Hope with that grin on his face when he gets on the source. Correct. Race number eight, Woodland Stud breeding a future mobile pace, nineteen eighty. 819, one of our fillies and mares races at Woodlands partner with us uh, to support. And this is a good one too, Greg. Yeah, absolutely it is. And gee, there's several chances here. Look, you know I'm a fan of Kikarangi Blue. And and again, this is this is a step up. Uh, beat Tat McLeod last time, beat it on its merits too. Um, but she does have really good early speed. And, and if Colin decides to use that and she's at the top end or in the trail again, then she'll, she'll be mighty hard to beat. Uh, she takes on the Oaks winner, no matter what, who trialed at Ashburton. She put in a couple of steps like we know she can, and she did that in the Oaks too, but she is fresh up, and I just don't see Olivia Thornley <laughs> pressing the go button early, um, not in this so early in her campaign. If she does and she leads, well, like she did in the Oaks, she'll take some running down, but just don't see that first up. Dancing Desire was great last time, uh, and behind Happy Place in an excellent time. Uh, so you've got to have it. And and I was disappointed with Life's a Beach last time, but she is back to fillies and mares here. Eisenberg uh, won that race and uh, Beach Ball was in front. She was in the trail and I thought she was a lock to run in the top three, worst case fourth, but she actually battled the last 100 metres. She's better than that, so don't count her out. Um, you know, Angela Montana, Glory's Delight, Cloudy Bay. It's one of these races that you could get, uh, you know, a nice each way price about the one you like. And I haven't even mentioned uh, Bodisa, who's a, a group two place getter at this venue, this campaign, and missed out last time, and, and that was in behind Kelly's Delight uh, in the group one. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't count her out either, but I'll go five, six, three, and eight. Tricky race. Race number nine, huge supporters of Addington Raceway, Hydroflow Plumbing Solutions, Handicap Pace, 2,600 metres at 8.49, and it's a beauty. Yeah, it is. Mighty Louie's the one for me. Uh, he's racing really well. He got beaten by one change last time who just swamped him late in the piece. Uh, the standing start holds no fear for him. Of course, he, he got success up at the Nelson uh, meeting in that caper. And, and I, I just really like him this week. I think he's the best bet in the race. Sam's Towns won three of his last four. Another from the Robert Jenner Dunn team. They've got a, a strong hand in this race. Uh, he'll be hard to beat. Heisenberg, brilliant last time. Step up again. Beach ball's in it, but I'm worried about the barrier for him. He hasn't seen the tapes on race night. Didn't really like what I saw at the trials, and barrier one won't help that situation. Not with horses directly behind him as well. If he did step, he's the he's a class horse, and Homebush Lads just, I don't know, he just goes around. And what's he up to now, Darren? 170? Yeah, he's 170,000. Remarkable, isn't it, for a horse that he'd gone around in green miles and and races like that, and and you he'd run fourth or fifth or something like that, and you thought, oh yeah, he's he's gone great, but he wasn't winning races, and then this season come along, this Country Cup season, and he's been the star of the Country Cups, and then he uh, you know he, he was at Rangiora two starts back and and won brilliantly there again, beating Buckskin, and he was very good behind one change last time. So he's a horse that's confident, um, and you can't count him out. I'll go eight, five, four, and six, and that's leaving out Henry Hubert, who uh, is a horse you don't normally leave out. Race number 10 is the first direct taxi's mobile pace, 1980, and it gets underway at 919. I think the punters will line up again with it, anything goes, and they've been hurt a couple of times now, and I don't know whether Devin Van Til will just go, I've had enough of this, I'm going forward, I'm going to go to the top, and if he does, he'll be the one to beat. So I'll go for him ahead of Jimmy James McGuire, who gets into this race really well, uh, as does all by myself. It's a prep barrier draw, so they've drawn wide, but they they are the three best in it, and therefore I think they'll find out the finish, seven, eight, and nine. And better be Shark gets a barrier draw, it's so honest. I know it's not well-placed in this race, but it'll be well-placed in the run because it'll get a beautiful run throughout. So I'll go seven, eight, nine, and one on on what's a, a really good race night. The, there's an opportunity for you here, punters, to find the one you like and, and um, get some nice value, or one or two if you like. Uh, but it's a good program, and it coincides with Auckland's Peter Brecken Memorial Ladyship Stakes, which uh, has Millwood Nike in it. So there'll be a few multis down in Millwood Nike, Muscle Mountain, I think, playing for a lot of people on Friday night. Spectators open after the last race. Fixed odds normally out about four o'clock on Thursday for this meeting, so Great. get in early and have a look at those. We're going to leave you with a video of the 2016 Lamb and Hayward Trotters Classic, Greg, reminding us of just how good a horse Mombay was. We'll have a look at, a look at him on the way out.
Turning in Bordeaux Gallop, Sunny Ruby swept to the lead. Third quarter in 28.9. Three Harriet of Mott and Mon Bay. Sunny Ruby leads. Harriet of Mott's two lengths away and Mon Bay outside the three. Sunny Ruby leads. Mon Bay's the danger to her. Still Sunny Ruby ahead in front. Mon Bay driving. Did it! Mon Bay and Sunny Ruby. I don't know if there's a margin between them. Harriet of Mott third. Next in Father Christmas and Le River. Here come the gallopers. Bordeaux, G up Nettie, Amaretto Sun and Lothario.